part of Jacobite Esau. Mm -hmm. In Romans 9, 10 to 16. And not only this, but when Rebekah also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children of, or the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that called mm -hmm. It was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger, yes. as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Yes. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Yes. So that it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that show mercy. Yes. Praise God. Yes. And this is where we are coming this morning. And we have mercy. On whom I will have mercy. I will have compassion. On whom I will have compassion. In other words, there is hope for you and me and everyone who have been heard already and able to allow these messages of wisdom a place in their hearts to germinate and bear fruit. It is unfortunate, however, that most of our youth today have allowed the spirits of insubordination, empty pride, lack of maturity, mm -hmm. arrogance, ignorance, and considered spirit of self-delusion to take precedence in the list of their priorities. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, again, most of these youth cultivated most of these habits from their parents and foster parents who in the presence or in the company of these innocent souls indulge in condemning, ridiculing, and castigating innocent people's characters for no justification whatsoever other than we are provoked or we suspect somebody is doing us wrong. These children look upon us for leadership and guidance, especially when we are in positions as role models for their morality. We have to be very careful as leaders, as parents, as foster parents, as Christians, whatever we sow, we shall reap. How do I prepare myself to merit God's favor and mercy? How do I make myself noticeable by God, since he is God of mercy and compassion? Amen. There are six basic steps, which if you can try your best to put them into practice, you will be able or you will be on the right track to identify your purpose correctly. Then everything else will begin to fall in place. Also, as you key into your purpose, you will find joy, peace and fulfillment. If you find it difficult to have inner joy and satisfaction doing what you are doing, it is most likely you are yet to enter God's purpose for your life. Amen. Step one, you have to admit you need God's help and mercy. You have to admit you need God's help and mercy. Amen. Our Lord said in Luke 5, 31 to 32, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous for sinners to repentance. Mm -hmm. If you think you have all the answers, you need not bother to develop your personal relationship with Christ Jesus. Step two, approach the throne of grace with a spirit of humility and not a spirit of self-righteousness, mm -hmm. as we also read in Luke 18, 9 to 14. Our Lord explained this in this parable. And he spoke this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, and even as this publican, I fast twice in the week, I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not even lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smoke upon his chest and saying to God, Be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the one, the other one. For everyone that exhausted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exhausted. Amen. Amen. Step three. 
Always remember to ask God for forgiveness of your sin. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9 to 10, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar, and His word is not in us. We also read or reminded in Mark 11, 25 to 26, that whenever we stand praying, if we have anything against anyone, we forgive him and let it drop. Leave it and let go. Yes. In other words, that our Father who is in heaven may also forgive us our own failings and shortcomings and let them drop. But if we do not forgive, neither will our Father in heaven forgive our feelings and shortcomings. Step four. Surrender yourself completely to God. Go and sell all that you have and give to the poor and follow me. Verily I say unto you, to be easier for a camel to enter through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. You don't have to be a rich man to be mean and selfish to God. Yeah. Even in your state of want, despite the fact that you are living in a state of poverty or need, you are still finding it difficult to surrender yourself completely. You prefer to use your time sleeping or just wandering about instead of serving God with that precious time. You deny God. The use of your God-given talent. And even to pay offering, not even tithes, you find it difficult or too difficult for you. How then can you expect God to consider you for any useful purpose in his plan for kingdom of heaven? He gave you your life. He even surrendered his only begotten son as a ransom for the remission of your sin. He attends to your needs and protects your going out and coming in. What more can you expect that you cannot serve him? To whom much has been given, much is expected. Amen. Step five, wait patiently in the Lord. King David waited patiently on the Lord. Despite the fact that he had many chances to avenge himself on his enemies, particularly King Saul, it's not because he knew that vengeance is the Lord. Joseph waited patiently on the Lord inside the Egyptian prison. Likewise, Nelson Mandela, they could have committed suicide, but they waited patiently only to become great leaders. How many used today? Lucky to be given second chances by God-fearing people through grace in Christ. After they have been forgiven and redeemed, they go back like dogs to, to feed on their vomits and blow all the chances of their life because of this same spirit of insubordination which will only lead to regret. For every tree which does not bring forth its fruit at this season will be hewn down and cast into fire. Finally, step six. Walk righteously before God and man. We have been told not to let loyalty and faithfulness leave us, mm -hmm. to honor one another, to do unto others as we will want them to do unto us, to give unto God what belongs to God, and to love others as ourselves. If we can remember all these simple laws or commands and obey them, we shall not be far from the kingdom of heaven. Because Jesus said in John 14, 1-3, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. May God bless his holy word. We thank you, O Lord, for this message. We thank you, Father, because you've been so kind to us. The ministries of the kingdom which were denied to the religious leaders, you made it available to us, O Lord. We read in, in, in Ephesians 3, 16, strengthen me in the inner man and 17 read that I may be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love. And 18 reads, let me grasp God's love 
the breadth and length and height and depth of it. And I think it is that I might be filled through all my being with the fullness of God, that I might become a body holy filled and flooded with God himself, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, Amen. that he might grant me a spirit of wisdom and revelation, that the eyes of my heart be flooded with light, that I might know the greatness of his power in me, that I may learn to sense what is vital and of real value, that I may abound and be filled with the fruits of righteousness, that he will keep and protect me from the evil one. And Colossians read that I may know God's will. And finally, in Colossians 1, 11 to 2, that I may be strengthened with all power to exercise every kind of endurance and patience with joy and thanksgiving. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.